Looking back at, I don't know, the interventions of the last two and a half decades, Iraq, Iraq, Sierra Leone, Libya, Afghanistan, what, what's the success rate, do you think? I mean, what sort of hit rate are we, are we getting? Well, I think you have to look at each individual case. I would argue the ones where I've been particularly involved, I'm happy to defend. I think Afghanistan, not something I started, but something I've been involved in finishing, will leave that country in a much better state than we found it. But where I think we'd be drawing the wrong lesson is we thought that the difficulties with these interventions meant that Britain should somehow turn entirely away from the world. The reason why we have sometimes to get involved is that otherwise these issues come and bite us here back at home. It was terrorism on the streets of Britain that caused us to be involved in Afghanistan. The same, I would say, applies in the case of uh, Iraq today. The I think we should have a very national security mm. focus. One of the things I brought is this National Security Council that brings together the domestic concerns about security and terrorism with foreign policy. That is the prism through which we should see these things. Right, but the one that was purely, purely yours, really, was Libya, wasn't it? Now, do you think, looking at Libya, that we left that country, having ousted Gaddafi, we left it in a better state than it was. Well, we left it in a better state in that we enabled the Libyan people to do something they wanted to do, which was to get rid of Gaddafi. <coughs> uh, but uh, you have to go back to why did we intervene? We were facing a situation where there was going to be a humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, Gaddafi was bearing down on Benghazi, threatening to kill the people like rats. We intervened on a humanitarian basis to help stop that happening. That intervention then led to the end of Gaddafi. Now, of course, the state of Libya today is not good. I completely accept that. But our responsibility was to help the Libyan people in that hour of need. We did that. We now need to help them, but it must be them in the lead, to try and sort out proper governance for their country. If you said to the population of Britain, if Syria, or uh, the uh, current effort in Iraq, and the West in Syria and Iraq, if that current effort is as successful as we were in Libya, I would be a happy Prime Minister and I would say we were right to get involved. I just, I mean, no, of course not, of course right. not. But these no. are two very, these are quite different situations. Uh, in Iraq and Syria today, we see a terrorist organisation that has taken control effectively of a state that has uh, uh, huge amounts of munitions, has huge amounts of oil, huge amounts of money, and it has already been carrying out terrorist plots and trying to carry out terrorist plots in Britain. This is a direct threat to us. So there isn't really a walk-on by option, even if we uh, wanted to. Well, have we got a strategy yes. in Syria? Yes, we do. Well, a strategy that isn't that we hope the Free Syrian Army will c kind of no, come back from a, nowhere. We have a strategy for the whole Assad. of Iraq and Syria. And if you want, I can run through it in detail. But it, it starts with action at home in terms of keeping our own people safe, stopping people from traveling, making sure our anti-terrorism laws are as strong as they can be. It involves working with uh, other countries, working with partners in the region, building up local forces so they can take on uh, ISIL. Look, some people say it can't be a strategy if all you're doing in Iraq or Syria is uh, airstrikes, because where are the boots on the ground? Which I would argue, I would answer, well, it's better, isn't it, if the boots on the ground are local boots on the ground, uh, even though that may take more time. But there aren't local boots on the ground, or there aren't enough of them. Well, in Iraq, I mean, the Sunnis, uh, the Sunnis if with, anything, are right. uniting around ISIS. Well, let's, let's deal with both <coughs> countries. I mean, Iraq, in Iraq, there is the Iraqi security forces. Yes, it's they need joke. to be built they're up. Joke, they're well, they? as we, we spent stand years today, building them up, and they, they need they to be the first sign of fighting. But at the end of the day, you know, the only way you can make these countries safe is by th th those countries themselves taking responsibility for their governance and their security. As the, the Ban Ki-moon said, you know, a missile can kill a terrorist, but in the end it is only good governance that can kill terrorism. So Iraq and Syria need the same thing, which is functioning government that backs the whole of the right. country with functioning armed forces that are backed by the whole of the right. country. Now, and you may say strategy? that's impossibly yeah. difficult well, no, to I deliver. Just, well, I just, what yeah. is the strategy for delivering that? I'm, well, I'm not it, sure it's it, in our power to deliver well, functioning it, it, government it, 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 to it, Syria and Iraq. It, it, is it, it is in our any power. Any more than Libya. In our, it is in our power to help train up Iraqi security forces, and that needs to happen. It's in our power to help train up uh, Kurdish forces, and that's in our power. And in Syria, we are, with the Americans, helping to build up the Syrian national opposition, who should provide a counterpoint to the unacceptable, illegitimate regime. And in time, I believe, there'll be a transition from that regime to one that can better 
uh, represent the whole country. If you're saying this is difficult, yes, it will take time. Yes, absolutely. It's, there are lots of ways in which it can go wrong, of course. But the threat to our country is such that actually, even though it's complicated, difficult, and, and needs a comprehensive plan, is not a reason for walking away. Let's go on to domestic politics. It's obviously a very interesting time, isn't it? I wonder whether you think that the greatest divisions in British politics at the moment are within the right, between, a, if you like, a, an anti-Europe, anti-immigration, uh, sometimes rather anti-business, anti-foreign intervention, anti-overseas aid, wing of the right, many of whom are in your party, and what one might think of as being a bit more the Financial Times right wing, which is more pro-Europe, which is pro-business. It's, uh, it has a loss of conservative values, but is nowhere near. No, I, I don't see it like that. I would it? say the divide is still, you know, on the centre right and right, you have parties and people uh, who believe you grow an economy through free enterprise, you've got to tackle problems like deficits, you do need to control immigration, our relationship with Europe needs to change, we need to address the things in the modern world that leave people feeling uneasy and uncertain in a globalised world. That is the centre-right approach, and you compare that with a centre-left approach that has really nothing to say about immigration, is happy with the settlement in Europe, doesn't care much about the deficit, indeed thinks it should go up, and I think is very uncertain in its support for free enterprise prize and business and is making very anti-business noises so uh, look of course I've got there a double, I've got a double right. battle no, yeah, no, of course I, you have, I, put it course like you have. I have a double battle on my hands I have to win a blue red fight against labor which is about growing our economy dealing with our deficit taking on the problems but I also have to win back uh, people who've left my party uh, who are you know concerned and worried about the pressures in our modern world and I've got to reassure them I absolutely do get the problems of uncontrolled immigration. I do want to change our relationship with Europe. I want to build a sense of national pride that this country can be a success again in this modern world. And I think it's often about the, the, those divisions on the right, as you put it. I would say a lot of them are about reassurance and understanding and, and going back to your values about what makes you tick rather than a fundamental division, which is what we have with Labour. But the basic dilemma facing you is, you, is do you move a little bit to the right to kind of win back UKIP voters, or do you tack left to kind of win the centre ground. And the electoral arithmetic, Lord Ashcroft, you will have seen his, his, his polls, his argument is, move to the right, you still don't win any UKIP voters, they'll just ask for more. Move to the left, and you can actually win quite a lot of centrist voters. How do you see that? How I, do you I see that don't dilemma? Really, I you don't, don't recognise the dilemma? Very, I think that left-right terms have had relevance in the past. I don't feel that at the moment. I feel it's much more about trying to get across uh, that our economic plan for Britain is not, you know, is not actually from the pages of the Financial Times, just dry and dusty economics. It's actually a plan to make sure people can feel, if I work hard, I can get a job. I can buy my own house. My kids will get decent schooling. I hear all of this. You know, but, but that is, you know, but <laughs> but I think the problem is people can feel disconnected yeah. from economic success, and we have to reconnect them. And that, that's not actually just about policies. It's about what's in here. Yeah. It's about explaining we get your aspirations and we can deliver them. That's not a left or right thing. No, but I just think the part of the, the, the potential problem you have then, trying to, if you like, mm. ride both these horses of the wings of your party at the same time, is that people are left a little bit confused as to whether the real David Cameron is one who was talking about green issues in opposition and was trying to modernise the Tory party, or is the one who is now banging on about Europe, uh, having said he wasn't going to do that. I just, I, I think there might be a sort of lack of clarity well, to where I, your I, heart I, I, is. I think the people, I've been party leader for eight years, prime minister for four, I think people get a fairly clear idea, and I don't see these two things in contradiction. If, if people, I mean, people are worried. Is this country going to deliver for me? Is there a good job for my child? Is there a good school place? And is there going to be a clean and safe environment? Mm. Are we going to be a country that keeps our promises to the poorest in the world? Does Britain mean something in the world? I think all those things are connected. And I think a modern, compassionate conservative can appeal to all of those. And it actually all well, fits together. But very if people have had long enough, yeah. well, people Look, had long I, enough to, to work out what I want. We're having an argument about whether if I asked you some specific questions about particular kind of interesting litmus tests of whether yeah. you're a modernizer or a conservative, a more socially conservative person, yeah. whether you would give clear answers to Well, you can person. try. So let me try yeah. one. Children at school, should they primarily be taught when they're doing weights? Primarily be taught about kilograms <laughs> or taught about pounds and ounces and stone? 
Um, I think I'd still go for, for pounds and ounces. Would you? Yes, I do. Okay, what about this one? You're in a public park. I mean, rather like miles and pints. Yeah. I, mean, I just think yeah. we've got no, no, a that's fair, way that's of... Fair, that's yeah. fair. Okay, you're in a public park. Two men, mm -hmm. recently married, are kissing each other. Is that sweet? Or is that mildly inappropriate? No, that's, that's fine. I mean, I, fine. I, I believe, look, I've been very clear about this, and I, this is where I do, as it were, marry uh, traditional and modern values. I believe in the family, I believe in marriage, and I think it's such a great institution. Uh, I think men should be able to marry each other, and women should be able to marry each other. I, I've had and, some and kiss each other in public. Well, as well. well yes, yeah, so if yeah, I can no, kiss my wife in public, I don't see why you can't kiss your husband in public. Let me give you a third one. This, this is interesting, actually. This is really, we are, I think, getting to the heart of it. You're a pharmaceutical company, you're based in Britain, competing on the world stage. And you've got two candidates for a, a mid-level job. One is a British one, who's okay. Mm -hmm. And the other is Latvian, a Latvian graduate, uh, who's really, really good. Which one would you like that pharma company to employ? Well, I want to make sure that the pharmaceutical company has good British people to employ. In the end, they have right. to choose. But I think, you know, this is where I absolutely think the answer to immigration is education and welfare yeah. as well as border control. So controls. I'm going to summarise, you've given us one conservative answer, which right. is pounds and ounces, yeah. one modernising answer, which yeah. is gays can kiss in public, and one which is a bit sitting on the fence. Well, not really. Look, I, well, want, I want the pharmaceutical. No, but, I'd but rather I'm the no pharmaceutical. Clearer. I'm no clearer well, about no, which side are. of this fence you're on. And the danger is, you, see, well, well, you sit in the middle, so the, the Carswells just don't believe you're one of them. The Carswells and Recklesses, they just say he's not one of us, he's never going to deliver. And the on, that, I'm not sure, to on that, I'm not sure they. I mean, look, there are lots of things I disagree with about D Douglas Carswell. But on that one, I'm not sure he'd give a different answer. I mean, with a pharmaceutical company, I want them to employ a British person. I want them to have trained British people to employ. Right. And it's a very clear answer. So, uh, right. So, so if they had the choice between an OK Brit and a good Latvian, you'd say take the OK British candidate. But it's up to them what of they do. Of course it is. Because, because this you would like them to do. I want them yeah. to employ British people, and I want there to be British people adequately trained with a welfare system that supports them into work to take those jobs. We're having great success with this, 1.8 million more jobs in Britain, the overwhelming majority going to British people, but it's only when we really fix education and welfare that we'll have that problem completely cracked. Mm. I just wonder whether you are in danger. It, it is, it's a problem, isn't it, for you? I think that was a pretty you, clear set no, of answers. No, if you love clear, each other, you can get married. I yeah, personally, yeah, when no, I'm baking clear. a cake, I do you, it in pounds and ounces, you and, and I want British you companies answered. to employ no, British people. So, I, mean, I was right. right. I said you'd give clear answers, oh, yeah. so I was, I was right. So yeah. that, that, that's good. But you, you were on both sides of the arguments in the, between well, your answers. I was answers. explaining yeah. myself. No, no, I mean, no, that's, that's, uh, that's the politics but it, is it about it. It just does mean that people don't quite know whether you are Mr. Modernizer, Mr. Centrist, going for those Labour voters, or whether you're still trying to. I think, look, they've had, they've had four years, mm. I think, a modern, compassionate Conservative. That is how I describe yeah. myself. I think people, look, there are lots of. No, no one would agree with every bit. I mean, some people say, I like what you say about cutting taxes, but I don't agree with about gay marriage and some people say I I love HS2 I think it's absolutely brilliant but you shouldn't be changing the planning system you know you, you have to you have to present mm. what you believe in and say to people come with me I can deliver those things no one's gonna like the whole package but uh, you should be consistent when you and I know you don't quite see it this way but when you're trying to sort of hold the party together and there are disparate wings in your party and they are oh. quite a quite a long way apart does the fact that you you have that situation, you're managing a government, a bit like John Major had to. Yeah. Does it make it very difficult to be strategic and to think things through? Because one of the criticisms of, of, of your style of government is it's a little bit shooting from the hip, having to make up things as you go along. And the the quick, great quote is he's brilliant at putting out fires, but boy, there are a lot of fires well, look, on in, his watch. I would, I would say, of course, party and political management is important, and parties are broad churches, and it's, it's a team you try and take with you, and that's an important part of, of politics. But I would challenge the idea this government hasn't been strategic. I mean, when it comes to getting the deficit down, long-term strategic decisions, reforming the pension system, reforming welfare, reforming our schools, often things that have been quite unpopular in the short term, but long-term strategic changes for our country. I mentioned HS2, fabulously unpopular with some people in our country, but I think undoubtedly mm. the right thing to have modern infrastructure. So I, I would, uh, of course, in politics, you have to make decisions. Sometimes you can't go ahead in the way you want to and all the rest of it. But I'd say this government has been very long term, very strategic. I mean, Rachel Sylvester, the Times columnist, in one of her columns describes how Theresa May was going to make some statement in the Commons and was told to make it on Radio 4, the Today programme because otherwise 
we're going to lose the next three hours. That would be an awful way of doing government. I've no idea whether it's a true right, description. I, I'm sure it doesn't it's ring any particular bells with me. But look, but that would be terrible if someone well, said no, that. If, that if would what be you're like saying, if what you're saying awful. is that every day you are in modern politics, you are fighting a battle uh, of uh, handling the media, answering questions. Yes, you are. But as I, I said actually many years ago, I want to run a country, not a 24-hour <laughs> television channel. What you have to do is try and handle that stuff, but at the same time keep your eye on the long-term horizon. And I would argue, when it comes to the big decisions about the future of our country, that is what we've done. But, you know, I, I often walk into the cabinet room and I look at that chair where Churchill sat in May 1940 and that famous, you know, five days in May when Britain had to decide whether to fight on alone or give in. Today, you wouldn't have five minutes before you'd be outside saying, well, you know, what's the interim decision of the cabinet? It'd be out on Twitter and all the rest of it. You know, I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying life in modern politics with a, with a news cycle that lasts for about half an hour uh, does put additional pressures on. So you've got to try and deal with those things, but keep your eye on the prize. Prime Minister, thanks very much. Thank you.